Hi dudes, the date, December 2009. This is nothing fancy. You have found my review on the Kershaw Barrage Model 2445. It's always cause for celebration when I can find a very high quality, high value, well built, well designed blade that I can put in my best folding knives under $40 playlist. And I'm doing my best to populate that playlist uh, for my guys, uh, TMPers, guys that follow me in YouTube currently. Uh, that's because I like a lot for my money. I know you guys do the same. And so my job here at the Nut and Fancy Project, as you know, identify that high quality, high value gear, whether it's a knife, a gun, tactical gear, or whatnot, so you can spend your money wisely. This is one of those items. Great knife, Kershaw, Barrage, and sorry it's taking me a while to get around to this review. I know some of you guys have been waiting for it, but with everything else going on that you see, Sometimes it's hard to fit it all in. First off, getting going, because I'm going to see how fast I can do this. A POU for this excellent little blade, I will say primarily everyday carry blade, EDC blade. Secondarily, perhaps emergency tactical, but I have some reservations of you putting it in that role. We're going to talk about that when we get to ergonomics. Um, but as an EDC blade, I think the Kershaw Barrage is excellent. The weight is reasonable, four ounces for what you get. Whoa, wait, Ned Fancy, I thought you don't like knives that are four ounces or more. No, I never said that. I said I want to get something in return, right? And we do get something in return with the Kershaw Barrage. We're going to talk about that. So the weight is manageable. The size is excellent. I think they did an outstanding job, Kershaw. They do a lot of good knives. I've reviewed several of making this so th uh, slim. That is one of the key selling points in my mind on the Kershaw 2445. Look how slender that knife is. Very reminiscent in my mind to the Kershaw Leak. Here is a model 16600, previously reviewed in the Nut and Fancy Project. Great blade, 2.4 ounces with aluminum scales. There's been lots of different versions of it. This is the olive drab smoke colored. I've rolled that in front of the camera before. What a beautiful blade that is. Assisted opening fast. I'm going to get carried away here. i got to be careful, man. But great blade. Um, but it's also very slender as well. And that makes the leak, at least in that regard, a very pocketable blade. It's not going to be bumping into stuff. As an EDC blade, I'm not a fan of fat and chunky knives. I've said as much. Uh, the Cold Steel Lawman, or Mini Lawman. I think I kind of berated that one a little bit because it's so chunky. And that's an EDC blade too. Not going to have that problem with a Kershaw Barrage. I love flat knives. It is kind of heavy and stout though for the knife of the size. And that's because of the handle materials um, that Kershaw chose. 410 stainless steel. Um, the downside, yeah, a little bit heavier. Some guys like that though. I acknowledge that. Fully acknowledge it. Some guys, they like that heft in hand. In this knife, and every knife is kind of different in my mind. I really don't mind it uh, because like we're going to talk about in, uh, I don't know, one of these talking points, it's a strong blade. That's what we're getting in return. Okay, and we'll talk about, about lockup. POU, EDC blade. Uh, uh, let me get to this. What are my reservations as tactical blade? Uh, again, I want to jump ahead a little bit here. First off, I think it has kind of a thumb stud issue. Okay, to make the knife very slim and form, Kershaw went with low profile thumb studs. On most of my folding knife reviews, reviews dudes, I talk about thumb stud issues. Um, I think I was maybe one of the first that did it. A lot of guys never addressed it because, but to me, for a folding knife review, it's pivotal because it's going to speak to how quickly you can get the blade out. And that drives to tactical use. That is a very low profile thumb stud. It does not stick out sideways from the handle, but it's hard to engage. Okay, and I find if you push forward, in other words, that direction, it's even harder. You kind of got to push up in that direction, and then you'll get a fast deployment. I could think of a dozen or a couple other, a uh, couple dozen other knives I'd rather be carrying if I know that I would have to use this as a defensive tool. So, thumb stud, not super great. Uh, I would like to see a thumb stud along the order of, where did it go? How about the blur? Also a Kershaw design, excellent. Sporting probably what I said in my review of this blade, one of the best design thumb studs in the industry. See how that's angled? Granted, the blur is a thicker knife. 
and so they are able to extend that thumb stud ambidextrously both sides of the blade but I love that slanted and angled engagement surface on the thumb stud the blur I would love to see a low profile version of that on the barrage the Kershaw barrage and let's not get confused I mean we talked about the mini barrage at least I did the Benchmade this is Kershaw's version so uh, can you swap the thumb stud out? Uh, I don't know. I think it'd be a hard thing to do. I don't see any screws to do it. It may be press fit in there very tightly. But Kershaw, if you're watching, come out with an angled, low profile thumb stud. Even if it extends slightly past the handle, I personally would be kind of okay with that. Um, as it is, though, for an EDC blade, I think it's adequate. I think some guys have complained, well, it's not a comfortable knife to deploy in fondle. And you know I love fondling them blades, don't you? Uh, in other words, it might hurt your thumb as you do it over and over again. I find this to be pretty much true. It's not super fun. You can do it though, and it comes out plenty fast once you learn the ergonomics of the blade. I kind of jacked it up there in the last deployment. Uh, just create that thumb tension, angle it in the proper way, and the Kershaw Barrage comes out rather quickly, actually. But not a tactical blade for that. Also, huh... Here we go again. The jimping is just aesthetic only. I would like to see a thumb ramp on top. If we don't have a thumb ramp, then give me some way of really getting a good purchase on the blade. The track tech inserts on the side of the handle are pretty good, but you only have them on one side. On the other side, it's just pure stainless steel. By the way, you're looking at version 2445 CKT. That is the limited edition black inversion and titanium nitride uh, barrage. Good looking blade and it is available online. A lot of guys, and I'm kind of deviating from the talk points, but sorry, here we go. A lot of guys will call this the Walmart blade because I think, not positive, it was generated as a Walmart um, collaboration and it's still available in lots of uh, Walmart stores on their website. And that model they sell is 245 or 2445 DST for around $35. Goodbye, really goodbye. We'll talk about that. Talk about that in value. This one is limited, uh, well, limited to something like 421 pieces, I think. So get it while you can. Good looking blade. Okay, so I jumped a little bit ahead uh, on some ergonomic issues about the traction. To me, a knife that offers emergency tactical utility. Uh, let me crank this up a little bit. Would maybe be along the lines of a blur that has track tech on both sides of the handle. A very well designed thumb stud again. This particular uh, knife design is assisted opening. A little bit better. No, it does not have on the top really good jimping like I said in the review. Um, but the handle is big enough. That's another factor in my mind to make it an emergency tactical blade. A little s uh, a smaller handle like this is going to be harder to purchase if your hands are bloody, sweaty, um, have oil on them or something, you're going to have some issues hanging on to the blade, uh, in my opinion. I mean, guys may differ on this. That's just my take. Let's get back to the talking points and get cruising. PAU, talk about that size and weight. I love the slimness. The overall size, Let me before I progress, let me roll in some comparisons so you guys can get an idea. My very much heralded and also beloved Kershaw Skyline. Reviewed in the project, of course, highly recommended by me, Nut and Fancy. You'll see the annotation if I get around to it. This is model 1760, 2.4 ounces, 13C26 steel for an amazing $30. Maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. How about the Pack Rat? Also, outstanding Kershaw product. I will review that separately. 1665 ST Combo Edge. You can see the size differences. And then also, let's roll that leak in again because. In a lot of ways, that barrage is very leak-like. Uh, in the blade shape, and I'll talk about that here in a second, and also in sizing. Um, but the barrage is a little bit bigger than the leak, and about the same, actually a little bit bigger than the Skyline. I was going to say about the same size, but not too bad. Um, really nice EDC size all around. It's, it's kind of a mid-range size. Uh, and that'll take us to the next talking point, of course, steel and blade shape. The blade shape I absolutely love on the Kershaw Barrage. Notice it's got good belly. It's got a nice, fine, and sharp tip. Okay, I think that's a requisite thing for an EDC blade. You'll be digging stuff out. You need to do you know, precision work occasionally with your EDC tasks. 
I think it's better than the leak design too. That's just me. The leak design, as I said in my review of this excellent knife, is delicate and it doesn't have much belly. And a lot of my cutting tasks, this is just me, have some sweep to it. Leaks will wear because they don't have any curvature towards the tip. You won't have that problem with a brush. It does curve, not overly. Still has a nice, sharp, piercing, capable point. Maybe a little bit delicate. I wouldn't drop it, guys. But enough belly to be effective. Hollow ground, too. And the blade steel is 14C28N. I don't want to go into lots of details about this steel. If you want to, you can look it up and you'll see guys talking on and on about nitrogen integration, balance and roll of the chromium, primary and secondary carbide formations, wear resistance translation, and stuff that's probably above my interest level. Uh, maybe one day I'll delve into that and make a video about it, but I'm a user. I don't really get off on the scientific properties of steel. I do like and am interested on how it performs though in roll. And in an EDC roll, the Kershaw steel, the 14C28N uh, is outstanding. And it is analogous and very similar to this steel, 13C26. Both are Swedish Sandvik products. I find they have excellent hardness, they're corrosion resistant, um, just a generally high quality chromium stainless steel good toughness and ease of sharpening. This 1760, I will say, is amazing at the fineness of edge that it can hold. And again, that's a 13C26 steel. This is 14C28N, a lot of acronyms to keep track of. Very similar though. Um, and there might be some controversy out there which one's best, I don't really care. I think both of them are excellent and they take a really fine edge. But this knife came out of the box razor sharp. Good job, Kershaw. Big thumbs up from Nothing Fancy for that. And that is a big plus. EDC wise, they're great. I think these Sandvik steels are really establishing an awesome track record too with a lot of different users. They're high value, because uh, remember we're talking about a knife, the Walmart version of this, it's gonna retail, or sell I should, I should say, not retail, under $40. Um, we, we changed the steel over to 154CM S30V, except with some very rare exceptions, maybe along the lines of the Buck Vantage S30V, and that's about $40. Most of them are just gonna jack the price up and it's gonna totally blow uh, value out of the water. So I like the steel. I think it'll be perfect for your use. I think you'll be happy with it. Uh, razor sharp as it comes out of the box, it'll maintain that edge and you can touch it up and keep it chugging along. Um, by the way, if you don't like the steel and you want something that kind of has more of the second type of cool, since we're talking about blade steel, I'll roll it in here. On loan in the Nut and Fancy project is a Kershaw Barrage 2445 Damascus. And this is going to be a DAM, standing for Damascus, of course. Look at that blade. Layered steel, Damascus variety. And no, I'm not a Damascus as expert. A lot of dudes are and they know so much more than I do and ever will about Damascus steel. Generally, it is a layered steel. There's different ways of doing it. There's different steels you can layer. Uh, once upon a time, my understanding was Damascus was necessary to compensate for the lack of advancement in metallurgy. Okay, those days are gone. You know, with the 13C26, the 14C28N, uh, and other outstanding steels out there, S30V, I don't think a Damascus steel holds an advantage over those, uh, those types of steels at all. In fact, in this iteration, I think it's disadvantageous because this is a very rustable steel, the Damascus that Kershaw uses. And it comes, again, from my research from Alabama Damascus Steel down in Wellington, Alabama, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's a very high value and useful Damascus, but you better keep it oiled. You can see there's a sheen on there. That's the rim oil. I make sure while it's in my possession, I don't put any more rust on it. Notice that edge. It's already discolored uh, from just slight exposure to the air. I don't know if it had a fingerprint on it or what, um, but if you don't keep these Kershaw Damascus blades oiled, they will go bye-bye and they will rust up bad. 
I think primarily the Kershaw Barrage and Damascus Steel. You could say, say the same thing about any of the Kershaw models that come in Damascus are second type of cool blades. These are blades that you would love to collect um, and just enjoy. They're cool. They're very affordable for what they are. This one, around 50 bucks. Again, I'm not the ac expert in Damascus, but if I'm not mistaken, that's pretty good value for Damascus blade. Excellent value, actually. And don't get me wrong, this thing is freaking sharp, very sharp. And if you keep it oiled up, it'll retain an edge. And if you want to put it into use and you're willing to deal with the maintenance of doing it, I think you're going to be very happy, uh, at least with the edge retention on it, would be my guess. I have not hard used this particular blade, to be honest. But pretty cool. Another blade offering. So you actually have three versions. I wish I had the Walmart version here. Sorry, I don't. Three versions of the Kershaw Barrage. More may follow. Different colorations, different steels. Kershaw does such an outstanding of offering those varieties, kind of like the Kershaw in this beautiful blue. Oh, it's gorgeous. Uh, so keep it up, Kershaw. Just excellent. That takes us to speed. Kind of getting back to the thumb stud issue. I'll use a Damascus version for that. Um, speed, I think, is adequate for EDC. Maybe be an, might be an issue with gloves on. If you're wearing tactical gloves, trying to dig that thumb stud out and make it happen might be tough. Could be tough. And you guys will see that cut on my hand. What was that from? Knife. I admit it. It was. I uh, folded that freaking Pikachu knife. Hate that thing. Benchmade, the one that has that real strong spring. You'll see why I was uh, uh, messing with that knife. Another review's coming your way. But I folded it and it just kind of snapped and took some skin off. Nice. Nice job, nothing fancy. Yeah, everybody gets cut that handles blades long enough. Back to speed though. Love it. That takes us to the next talking point lockup. I think it's ideal. Very solid, side to side, up and down. Just excellent. I, I love the lockup on the barrages. Really no issues. Uh, blade centering is not perfect on these two examples. I probably will start talking about that a little bit more. It's favoring just one side here. But again, I'm not totally anal on that. As long as it's not rubbing or if it's not aesthetically, you know, out of kilt, I'll deal with it. And both of them are pretty good that way. Now we get to the other side of lockup, and that is strength. Maybe you had an issue running a Skyline, even as an EDC blade. And there's some guys that are like this because it has a liner lock type of lockup. This one right here. So let me ask you this, which one do you think is going to be stronger as far as lockup? Liner lock on the left, the Skyline, Skyline still a great knife, or the Barrage, a frame lock, stainless steel frame lock that has about a 50% engagement surface on its locking bar on the back side of that blade. Obviously that one. This is a strong knife. I told you I wouldn't mind the weight if I get something in return. What do I get in return? A strong knife, a frame lock. Stainless steel is adequate. I would like to see titanium someday. That would be cool. I would dig titanium. Wouldn't be an affordable knife though. It's really gonna increase the, the cost. Strength is excellent. If the pivot point ever generates some movement, of course, you can tighten it up here. Uh, has a Zytel backspacer on the back, so it's not total pillar construction, so you might get some gunk in here like we've talked about before. You can easily take the knife apart with the torque screws that you see there. And handle material. Man, I'm just finally making some progress. I already talked about that. 410 stainless steel track tech inserts. I much prefer these over the old skateboard tape. Okay, and actually I had and wrote Kershaw couple years ago, actually several years ago, and said, hey, can you switch it over? I, and that's just my preference, guys. Sorry if you disagree. But that skateboard tape, when I use it in a lot, a big run like this, can really just chew the pants, can chew your skin up. I don't mind it on the back spine. As you've seen, I've modded some of my knives out. But I like this rubber uh, track tech much better. And it does provide adequate traction on this side. On this side, maybe not so much. No big clip issues that I find as far as ergonomics of it getting in the way. Not for me. I like it. There's a f finger indentation right there. Decent. Uh, again, I wish the jimping was functional. You can't get everything though. I wish you could. So overall, I will classify in the role as an EDC blade, the ergonomics of the 2445 Barrage as excellent. Uh, good in hand, very slender again, nice curvature conforming to the palm right here. Uh, just overall, 
I dig it. No issues whatsoever. By the way, if you have issues with imported blades, you know, don't worry about it with the Barrage and pretty much all the other Kershaw designs. That's because made in the USA, baby. A lot of guys will dig that. I do not get mired in that controversy. Sorry. Um, I just don't. But I like it when they're made in the US and I like it when they come in under $40. But this, to be honest, will probably, we have to kind of stretch it to put it in that playlist because this one is about $43. That's a really good price from my friends at yourcornerstore.com. Snapshot, December 2009. Okay, you might beat it somewhere else. I highly doubt it. Those guys have the best prices of anywhere I've ever seen. Um, but if you can, rock on. I'm so for it, it's not even funny. Clip design, standard Kershaw. Okay, we saw this clip, didn't we, in the skyline? Same clip. Love it. Uh, you know, could it be a little bit skinnier? Yeah. Two, uh, you know, two screws, is that enough to hold it on? I think so. If you have issues, you know, Loctite, I think Kershaw automatically Loctite says anyhow. Uh, blackened. On this version, I think that's very appropriate, very thematic. And of course, on the Damascus version, probably on the Walmart 2445 DST, the combo edge one, it's going to look the same. Bead blasted. And that blade, by the way, on that Walmart version of the Barrage is a bead blasted finished, uh, if I'm not mistaken, same steel, 14C28 steel on that. So, awesome. Durability on the Kershaw Barrage, I predict, will be outstanding. It's a frame lock. It's made of stainless steel. Uh, very durable. The only way you can jack it up is perhaps by dropping it onto concrete and busting that tip off. Could it happen? Yeah, it could. I mean, you can't have everything, dudes. You want a very fine tip for fine work, which I do in my EDC blades. It's, it's really tough to get a compromise of a very strong tip with delicate precision qualities. So be careful of that. Other than that, I think it's great. I think a couple users uh, have complained about, where's my light? Hmm, Streamlight Pro, blue, love that thing. Uh, looking in here, I didn't take the knife apart, but I think it has Teflon washers in there, not bronze. And on some other designs too, not just a brush, a couple guys I've heard complain and write to me, hey, those washers you know, stretched out, they went oblong on me had to take the knife apart. Uh, all I will say is that I haven't seen that. If I do, I'll contact Kershaw. They have outstanding customer service. They will take care of their customers. They have me several times. No, I never tell them I'm nothing fancy or at least not during those little minor engagements. Uh, just great customer service. A lot of them do. Kershaw's no difference. How about value? Talking point. Excellent. Excellent. Like we've been talking about all along under $40, not for these two versions, but this one's darn close. A limited edition Kershaw blade in black, blackened titanium nitride, I can't speak, in blackened titanium nitride with a very high quality steel, the 14C28N for $43. Again, I'm ballparking that. Amazing, amazing. Look how good looking that blade is. You know, for me, it comes out fast and sure. Once you get practiced, I did lubricate that with a little bit of rim oil on that pivot point. That helped a little bit. You might adjust that to get it coming out quicker. But $43 for that? Amazing. Amazing. Gift idea. Dude, if you're looking for a gift idea, someone rolled this up to me and said, Hey, uh, you know, I was just thinking, uh, you know, you might like this. I know you're a knife guy. Here's a Kershaw Barrage. Uh, you know, limited edition, by the way, 2445 CKT. I'd go, Dude, high five. High five. Mom, wife, if you're looking at this, get your dude one of these. Either one of these is good. Between the two on this one, I'm just keeping the skyline in here for the heck of it. Still love that blade. Between the two of these, probably this one because it's more useful day to day. I don't know if it's just me, but I think just sitting here in the few minutes we've been talking, that blade is rusted a little bit more. <laughs> I'm kidding, but it looks like it. High maintenance blade is not a good EDC blade, in my opinion. Forget it. It's just not. You want a low maintenance blade, and that 14C28N, if I'm getting that right, steel, is a very low maintenance blade for what it is. Cool factor. Oh, man. Almost coming to the end. Sad, really. I love talking blades. Well, Damascus, can you beat the cool factor on that? Yeah, you can. There's others. But for the price, if you're looking for cool factor in a barrage, that Damascus version, I think that's good looking, too. The bead blasted stainless steel handles against a Damascus, just gorgeous. 
Uh, that's max cool factor. Remember, first type of cool is absolute utility. Second type of cool is functionality and roll. And I think the Damascus, uh, I'm sorry, the Kershaw Barrage has it in spades depending on what you're after. It just depends. What a great little blade this is. US made by Kershaw. Outstanding design. Great blade shape. I find it fast to deploy. Yeah, the thumb stud could be better. Um, but they went for the ergonomics of a very slim carry blade. And it's a frame lock. It's a frame lock. Wow, great blade. Thanks for the support. None fancy. See you.